Um, good evening, Timberlane, and welcome to the SAU 106 and Timberlane uh, School Budget Committee meeting, regular meeting of December 8th, 2022. I'll call to order, please. All right. Christy Eclair. Mm -hmm. Here. Catherine Consalvo. Sierra Dulce. Julie Hammond. Here. Elizabeth Costa. Here. Michael Mascola. Here. Todd McCormick. He's excused. Sue Sherman. Here. Karen White. Here. Mark Sherwood. Here, remote. Um, also uh, on remote uh, on with us is Maria Watkins, our uh, CFO, um, and seated at the table is the superintendent and the assistant business manager, Lisa Oliver. Doing better. Um, uh, welcome and season's greetings to everybody. Uh, we do want to take a moment, if we can, tonight and uh, wish Todd McCormick and his family our deepest sympathies uh, and our thoughts and prayers in the loss of his mom today. So, um, if we could stand and pledge allegiance. Liz, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we've got some minutes here from the meeting of the 29th. would like the minutes to um, reflect that I requested that I be marked as excused in my absence. That was not a night when you switch the night of the meeting. I could not um, switch my schedule around. So. Can I get a um, motion to put the minutes up for approval? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Christy. Can we get a second? I'll second it. Second by Julie. Any discussion or questions, corrections, other than the one I'm, I noted? If not, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? Three, four, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> four, um, opposed, zero, abstaining, the three of us. Four, zero, three. Thank you. Okay. Any correspondence? Any delegates and individuals here? Seeing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, just want to reiterate, um, I would expect that everyone watching has received the message today. There was a text message and an email that went out uh, regarding the New Hampshire school shootings. Uh, there have been 911 calls that were placed to um, state and local police 
indicating that there were school shootings at a number of schools in New Hampshire, all of which were a hoax. This was just like the November occurrence in Maine. Um, there were several school districts surrounding us that did uh, receive calls to those police stations indicating that there were school shootings, all of which were a hoax. So we maintained constant communication with our local police who are in touch with state authorities, um, but we will continue to remain vigilant that in the event of any calls coming in, we're going to respond as though they are real until they've been proven to be false. So um, just to remind everyone that, uh, you know, safety is an absolute priority for us, for our students, and for our staff in order to learn. They need to feel safe. So that's something that we need to maintain. On to better news. Check out the uh, Timberlane School District website. We are in the holiday season, so there are a number of holiday concerts and theatrical performances that are happening over at the PAC. Um, addition, I'll cover a couple of things uh, more specifically, but also winter sports are well on their way. Uh, so there is something every night of the week. There is actually more than something, one thing every night of the week between the PAC and um, whether it's, you know, home or away, sporting events. I was leaving here last night, and it was a wrestling match, which we won our first wrestling match with a lot of freshmen. So, um, you know, nothing like a rebuilding year for Timberlane. Uh, I think uh, wrestling, you know, rebuilding for Timberlane is something that's very different than everybody else with, with respect to wrestling. But there were also uh, events, concerts, events at the PAC. So, um, and that was kicked off with the Merrimack Valley Philharmonics last weekend, which was outstanding. They have a number of concerts coming up in the spring. But um, we also have tomorrow night a Milkman, a Milkmen comedy show the improvisational show. So that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the PAC. Friday, December 16th, 7 p.m., the Timberlane Drama and Music Departments will bring us back to a time in 1944 with Don't Touch That Dial. So it's a, this is a free performance. And what it is, it's a theatrical and musical performance that uh, mimics a 1944 radio show. And so we'll have uh, our actors and our musicians performing as though there uh, was a radio show in front of a live studio audience. So that sounds like it's going to be really cool. And in fact, actually, we have some of those performers um, just prior to next week's, next Thursday, December 15th. We have the commissioner, Frank Edelbew, the commissioner of education, coming to speak to a joint meeting between this Timberlane Regional School District Budget Committee and the Timberlane Regional School Board. And Commissioner Edelblut is coming to explain the education freedom accounts. But just prior to, starting at about 635, 640 in the lobby and other common areas in the pack, there will be some of the performers from Don't Touch That Dial as they have a dress rehearsal. So they're going to perform for folks as, as we come into the pack, and it's really looking forward to that. I'm sure it's going to be really cool. Um, and I think that uh, covers everything that I was going to do. I want to keep it brief um, so we can get right down to business. Okay. Other than, oh, I'm sorry, what the, I, as I, I think I said it, actually. I mean, every, there's, there are holiday concerts, all of the ele elementary schools, middle school, high school, you name it. There is something every night for somebody. Yeah, the calendar's quite full yeah. over there at the PAC. Um, if, you, if you didn't get to see it live, I know you can watch it uh, mm -hmm. on, on Vimeo, et cetera. Um, some really good performances, including this weekend, Sunday, coming up of shows. Sunday, noontime and 2 o'clock, more music. Um, so always, always wonderful in this season. Uh, anything from any other budget committee member? Have we, have we had any other meetings? Mark, strategic plan or anything? Have we had a meeting that I missed? We have Did not. Not had a strategic plan meeting. And CIP is done, so that's already so Jeez. we should be set with that. Good. Okay, new business then. We are discussing the proposed budget um, that's here in front of us. Um, all the players have made presentations, I believe. Um, and um, 
if you haven't had a chance committee to look it over it's an awful lot to digest I realize and so we're here tonight uh, Maria are you gonna lead this discussion she's yes. muted yes I, uh, I'm having a really hard, hard time uh, hearing, <clears throat> hearing you have the eye will can you hear me okay yes is there an external mic for that? Uh, it should be the mic from the camera itself. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm using a closer file. That I don't want to do. <laughs> Maybe his hand up pretty well. Sometimes Ken has an external mic. So we have now the new proposed, uh, every guy's proposed budget. <coughs> Which is eighty-three million twenty thousand four hundred and eighteen. That's a ninety-one percent increase uh, from the prior year. And he has the capital improvement. He has been awarded the capital improvement for the original budget committee last week, uh, last meeting. Uh, and I think he uh, adjusts the retirement, the New Hampshire retirement. Can you hear me? No. No, it's really difficult you. to hear you, and uh, we're getting a lot of reverberation back and to understand you, um, Maria, so bear with I'm us. I'm sorry, and my voice is not helping either. Um, is that better? Actually, yes. A yes. little bit, yep. Yes. So we're looking at a 9.1% increase over last year's proposed and voted budget. Yes. 9.1% increase over last year's voted. Uh, are we comfortable with that big an increase? I got heads shaking that we're not really happy with that huge, uh, big an increase. Um, wow. And that's not even including anything that would be warrant articles, correct? That's correct. It's definitely a concern. What's the difference? Well, we went down for last week's first proposal, which was 9.5 increase, <coughs> because we adjusted the New Hampshire retirement system rate that went down. Um, that brought it down a little bit, 0.4%. Um, I mean, as we all know, the, the increases are, are extreme in there. A lot of them are just well, the contractual agreements that we have and um, the utilities, which is a half a million dollars alone. Um, we have special education, which is another million contractual. We have the food service, the transportation. Which is yeah. six, so, uh, so most of, I mean, all of, most of the of the increase is just contractual agreements that we have for services that we have to provide. Right, that we can't make adjustments on. I I realize that. Um, I'm looking in the minutes. Oh man, is she sick? Is she sick? No. Oh, you're sick. I didn't realize you're sick. Um, what about the default? We're, yeah. Not that we're involved in that, but what's the default? A million less or a million more? Two million less. It's on the next page. It's two million less. And that represents a 6.7 increase. So I think what, Sue, um, what I think we've typically looked at in the past, before we get into any of the finer numbers, just looking at the core stuff, is if we see too big of a spread of what we think, that, w that we put in front of the taxpayers, the less chance of success of getting our proposed. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to dwell on the default because that's not in our purview, but right. um, we, got a, we got a good spread here. And so we put in front of the voters. I don't know what they're going to do, but we stand a good chance of just not getting our proposed. This is a 
this is a big increase. I understand all of our administrators did a good job coming in with their numbers, but inflation and other factors, but this is going to be a big pill to swallow for our community. So they don't see that the, right, Mike. So the voter does not see the, mm -hmm. the increase mm -hmm. number. They see you're either going to vote the proposed budget mm -hmm. of 83 million and change, mm -hmm. or, well, no, not or. And if you vote no, then the default number <laughs> is mm -hmm. 81. So that's, they see that 2 million ish and change. I mean, when you, when you look at it from the standpoint that capital improvements, we added a million dollars yep. right off the top last. Mm -hmm. And that's needed to maintain these, yep. not even, it really scratch the surface. Mm -hmm. So anyone, any taxpayer who's been listening to any of the communications about the status of our schools, and they look at their own utility bills, they hear about the transportation contract that we just had, there are, and then, you know, every, all, all of our other contracts, if they've been paying any attention to all, this should not come as a surprise. But I mean, I totally understand that is a big gap between default and proposed, but the status of our buildings right now is we need the money to, I mean, if we're not building new schools, we've got to make them the best they can be for our, for our children. A 9% increase over last year's voted budget is difficult for me as a taxpayer to be able to go out there and publicly say it's not all just based on, on our fixed, fixed accounts. It isn't. That's a big, big, big gap, big amount. So looking at those things that are not fixed is probably the only place That's right. to That's go to take, to take a look right. to see where do we prioritize those things. And do you say we don't want it to go higher than seven? I mean, do we have a, do we, I don't like to do that either, set an artificial number and then have to back it into that formula. I just want to also um, just mention to Lisa, I think everything you just said was spot on accurate. Sure. Mm -hmm. But when you said if anybody's been watching these meetings, I'm going to tell you right now, our attendance of people watching is, uh, it probably counts on a couple of hands. And so, yes, we've publicly said it. We've made the documents available. But I don't think people come home from work and say, hey, honey, have you seen what the budget committee's been working on? <laughs> um, That's where so, we as a district, we need to spend a great deal of time and energy and um, you know utilize every resource we have to get all of the information out there right. in a variety of yeah. media mm -hmm. so that it's voters. so yeah. yes yeah. Right. we're we're making the information available and the opportunity for anybody to come listen and learn the reality is they're going to learn when they go into a voting booth right that's when they're going to learn and they're going to say I have option a and b and they're going to make a decision pretty i think a lot of people will be making a decision very quickly inside a booth right. Right, because they won't. Prior to that right. is where I hope, you know, not mm -hmm. hope, I will, you know, do everything we can to reach out and reach like the voters. You can, you can say, I'll to. open up my phone lines and, you know, we gotta take go it. out there. we got to provide mailers. We have to put it but online. But if we've got, we you know, to go to school events. 20,000 voters, <laughs> very few are going to take advantage of right. those offers that you put out. Right. And even at the hearing in January? Yeah, that's, that's another representation, we'll have, right? We'll have a representation there, but not a huge, huge population and will, our there. Our numbers aren't huge there. And they're, um, <coughs> that might be the first time some of them who do, do come to that even hear the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, With that being said, I understand a lot of things are contractual. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, we're getting Fixed pushed, cost, right. right? So we can only go after what we can go after. Um, so when, when you start working down what we can go after, it ends up taking the hit in the facilities mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have fought and fought and fought to get a reasonable amount of money in a facilities budget to mm -hmm. fix these things. 
And it's because we haven't put the money there in facilities. That's why we're in the shape of the business of, that we're we, in right now. Oh, right. So are we going to just keep cutting it down you know, to then I mean, hurt the facilities in the long run? Liz has been part of this school district for a long, long time. So is Michael. So yeah. am I. We've, we've, this is not a this new, is, this is this not is, a new sentence. This is an ongoing battle. I shouldn't say battle, but, you know, we've been going out there and, and trying to get a lot of this done. And it's it's a no, it's a no, it's a no, because people are watching, and I get they're watching their pocketbooks. Um, but this, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, we need to do something because this is going to hurt. And then I'm not quite sure what educational funding is going to look like, so that's going to hurt. So, you know, can we have a, maybe a spreadsheet of the operating expenses that we can manage? And how do we get some of those improvements for the, the buildings? You know, can we put some of that money in and just look and see what some of those operating costs are that we can... Well, when Carl made his presentation, I mean, he I thought he did a great job. He did a fabulous job, and I want to make sure we can get something done yeah. because we can't afford the bonds for any kind of big construction or buildings. So I'm just going to put this out there for our administrators to hear. So I'm on the second page of this document. At the very top, it talks about, I'm looking at the 76 line, 76 million of 76. So the salaries line of 36, we can't touch, that's contractual. The benefits line, we can't touch, that's 21 million, that's contractual. To Liz's point, the operating, that's got to have some amount of variables in there that we could hopefully begin to look at. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. There, I mean, but it's not it's, that. Eight, it's, let me put it this way: Is that eighteen million contractual, or is that stuff that it's both. can? It's, it's, it's right. a combination of utilities. utilities. Right. So, I guess maybe we could start by saying, since we can't touch the first two, is to look at the operating pieces that you said, Liz. Yeah. Look at the operating pieces that we could even begin to adjust. Obviously, if it's got the utilities and we can't touch them because we can't touch utilities, we don't touch them. But mm -hmm. if it's got the potential to be looked at and touched, I think that'd be a good starting spot. Right. And, and I want to make it clear, I don't want to take away from schools, mm -hmm. but if, you know, and what kids need in the classroom, but if we can find some wiggle room that if classrooms are asking for 30 boxes of crayons and they only need 20, can we get 25? Like compromise in some way this is going to be a tough one yeah i mean you listen to all of the you know the administrators when they came in from the schools <coughs> and you know prices of papers gone up yeah. prices i mean mm -hmm. that's Everything. the thing that i'm mm -hmm. noticing proving the po's is the increased prices of the different items that we're buying right and the other thing is i had asked you know like i'm trying to like figure out how to rationalize the field liner oh, versus I'm glad you asked well cuz i sent that question versus yep. employees like how much how much time energy and salary does it cost for that one employee to do all of the fields every day well i had a convers uh, your question really was enlightening cuz i dug into it speaking to carl just the actual time it's to field and you know do the um, do the actual lining, not set up, not clean up. Mm -hmm. Six hundred and twelve hours a year, mm -hmm. man hours, so, to do that field, and then oh, for the price, it's fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. The one time fee was fifteen hundred, and that's the initial setup. That's one time. After that, it's fifteen thousand dollars. But in that fifteen thousand is three thousand dollars for paint which is what we would spend any you know in paint costs so really now you're down to 12,000 so with that 12,000 612 man hours um basically you're looking at someone without bennies making $19.60 an hour so fully loaded probably you're talking uh, and the two gentlemen that normally do it and I was taking the lowest paid salary but the person that normally does it 
is more is higher in the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the chain. You're looking probably about thirty k. <coughs> We're paying twelve in save. You know what I mean in time, in not salary. to in salary. To but basically, just... he'll be doing different projects that obviously looking around the district, we can. You know, there's plenty of project our mm -hmm. our team could be working on. So that's saving 612 hours doing something else. Um, the other part of this, uh, Carrie and I were watching, it is very, very precise. It cuts the time it takes to do it. In general, what it takes to do the lining, it's off by at most a centimeter, which if I've been to games, daughters played sports, we've had some line issues, um, but it's... Very, it's quick and it saves on paint. The amount of paint that it uses and paint costs have gone quite high. And because um, I have an expert over there for paint costs, and she, she was saying paint costs are rising. So there was savings both with time and the actual, you know, uh, product that we're using. Okay, so so, so it's thirty thousand dollars a year. It's basically low man on the totem pole, low. Basically, what it would take if we were to pay him to just do that, it'd be about thirty k. Wow. All right. And and Maria had the. Um, she actually spoke to another BA that we we go to BA meetings, and he bought it for his district, and he goes best decision he made. He was loves the product. They they does a fantastic job. Um, the warranty, it's a, so basically it's a subscription. You can renew it every year, and every year you get a new palette of paint um, products. And if something does go wrong with the product, or with the robot, they give you a replacement robot. So that's part of the warranty. Okay. How long is the warranty for? It's basically an ongoing every year. Every year so then, it, yeah, and there's various parts and pieces um, you know, that they'll give you as part of that annual, but you can cancel subscription at any time. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. So before we get into individual pieces of crayons and line striping, can we go through more of this report? Sure. In, in order. Um, so I'd like to go through the next section, um, just for everybody. Which page are you on? I'm on the second page. Pages aren't numbered, so. So I'm on the second page right after it says 76067, 76 point million. On which? On second the page. Page two. Right okay. On the front or the back? On the preliminary the front. proposed budget side? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number the pages. are you on? Number the pages. Just page two. In the second page, after the graphs, Mar after the tax rate graphs, Maria, the very okay. next page, the basically proposed budget. So if I continue on from what I said earlier, I think Liz, Liz said something too. If we look at the operating line of $18 million, uh, and what pieces are non-contractual. So then I look below it, you've got all the, all the deltas for these various pieces. We just go by them line by line, and like for instance, salaries, contractual, we can't touch. FICA, contractual, we can't touch. Right? Correct, Lisa? Yeah, that is correct. So, can you just identify for us which ones for the public we can touch? Like, obviously, you've got professional services, capital improvement, right? Some of these. So, which ones on there are not contractual? Oh, none on this page. The professional development line is contractual. That is for the okay. CBA, for the custodians, and the <clears throat> cafeteria workers. Mm -hmm. The insurance of 2.3 million is the GMR for health trust. That is contractual. Which ones are not contractual? 161 for transportation is contractual. Food service 178 is contractual. We have a contract with uh, Special education. That's contractual. Tuition is contractual. We have to provide those services, and 80% of that money is tuition for out of, out of uh, district placements. Uh, utilities is contractual. We do have a contract with for the gas and the electricity. Um, <clears throat> maintenance and repair, 219000 That's every single year the maintenance line is over $200,000 over spent. So that's 
the minimum that we need to get by with the regular maintenance that we need in the buildings. Uh, professional services of 139 is contractual, and then the million dollars for the capital. It's not contractual. That's not contractual. It's what we added last week. All right, so if so I... Pretty much because as you saw, as you saw in the presentations, every, every budget was pretty flat. The only budget that increased, again, was facilities, and it wasn't an increase in, in supplies or anything like that. It was contractual for utilities. So here's what uh, I'm going to say. Just... budget was pretty... I mean, they did a great job keeping their budgets as flat as they could. So the uh, capital improvement line is and the equipment line, which is equipment is replacement and new equipment. And maintenance and repair. And maintenance and repair. Right, so those are the only three. Yep. yep. Which don't, mm -hmm. so other than, and, and I don't dispute that we need any of these, right? No, so we're not, right. I just want to make sure that all your administration, at least I can pretty much speak for the board, we appreciate all of your efforts. And we don't <laughs> dispute that we need this stuff. So I'll start by saying thank you. So I don't think anybody's going to dispute that we could do, you know, multiple millions in capital improvement. And 219 <laughs> on $100 million worth of property? It's chump change. I mean... Well that's, <laughs> well, that's the difference, Michael. The capital improvement is not part of the default budget. Yeah. That's the difference, the million dollars. So yeah. it's either we're going to support... Now I'm coming. I'm coming, Maria. I'm with you. <laughs> so we're either going to support a budget that includes capital improvement that we have fought and fought and mm -hmm. fought to get at a re at not chump change level, but at something reasonable, or we're going to cave and say cut it, and we're going to line up with that second number that has the <laughs> capital improvement not in it. Which is the default budget because they follow the up. That's the to be back side of that second page. You've got to number the pages. Yep. This yep. makes yep. me nuts. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't include it. So now, now we're talking. There's that million and million and change difference between default and proposed. But how how do we? How do we continue on without having that million dollars in there? You don't. We cannot don't think sustain we can. a school. So you you said it earlier. We have to educate the public. So what do we do? How do we educate We're, the public? I'm just do a mass campaign. Yeah, I mean, That's let's start doing wrong. it. We've got to. This is what we, we have to form do. Form a committee. I mean, we had One the tour. We can do it, and and this was this. We've done it before. I mean, we have to so rally. I don't want my taxes to go up either. But right. We, we don't have a choice. I'm deeply concerned about well, it. Well, it's continuing to pay more probably later. for sure. It has. Oh, no, no. Those repairs, if we had done them I 10 know. years ago, 15 years ago, when at we were first. At a fraction of the cost. At a fraction of the cost. Yeah. Not waiting for equipment, not back ordered equipment, not, not. Would have cost us much less. Right. We're going to get less for our money this time around for a million dollars. But yeah. that's the difference now between the proposed. Yes. And the other number. And we can't keep putting band-aids on everything that is that is going down because it's going to create a situation where we had with the septic system and the well at the high school where we had to freeze everything um, a while back. And until we got a price and we got it, was able to figure out how to pay for it. And it, it wasn't fun. It, I think Michael and I were sitting on the board at that point, and it was not fun. It was pretty stressful. Now so, that's making now that proposed budget's making more sense to me. Julie. Well, and then you know if we're operating on doing repairs as you know the emergencies arise, we're we're paying more. I mean, basically, so many things have almost doubled. I, yeah. I mean. Mm -hmm. it, the mm -hmm. the prices, I, I you know, mm -hmm. looking at the prices of building a, a new school, to, I mean, is just. Maria was cutting out, but she said that she had, um, she talked to some other BAs who have done this, and they made actual, like, voters got, voter mm -hmm. guides to give out and hand out and go to, like, Slickman meetings and all that stuff, and 
PTA events, meetings, and the voters' guides were really event. helpful. Yep, yeah, you need and that, that would be a good thing for us to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we've done we that in the past. Every school right. event. Right. We have to be all over the internet, social media, you know, ball fields, courts, theaters, you name it. We have to be there. So, with due respect, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. I want you to think of the person who doesn't have any kids in the school, yep. and Timberlane isn't even on their radar screen. Mm -hmm. Like they don't attend an event. We have to make. Yeah, we have to reach all of those folks through. Right. You know, every mean that we can, and that that's where you get back to. to you know, you you do have to go back in time a little bit with mailers. We need to work with you know the local news newspapers. Um, if it means knocking on doors, you should be out there knocking on doors. If we, and we have this to, in an electric media format so that we could get it on social media, <clears throat> I think that's about the only way to penetrate to those who don't actively have children or have historically had children at Timberlane. Uh, that's where they get their local news. That's where they form their local opinions. And if nothing else, if we are able to get it up on some of the more popular sites, it will certainly generate some buzz, especially when the numbers have seen, are seen. But I'd rather have an educated public than public going in just with a knee-jerk reaction and voting things down without having had the opportunity to hear the justification for these painful increases. And we have to, yes, we have to help people understand it, you know, understand the impact. Um, you know, and the overall costs and, you know, hearing about what those costs would become if we don't do it. So, and I, you this know, is I a crazy idea, right? But for the people, I'm always thinking, you know, we got one group who's actively tied to Timberling, right, because of their, their children. And then there's another segment of our population which doesn't have direct ties. This is gonna, you, you may all laugh, but... Um, Every one of us voters needs food. So sometimes when you go to the supermarket, you know, you can see the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts yep. selling stuff. We are all going to go to the market, probably at least once a week. Maybe if we asked those uh, vendors if we can borrow some space outside just to hand out something. Yes. Because that's where I think all of our voters are going to cross. They don't all go to the library. They're not all going to go onto the internet, but they are going to go get food. Right. In addition to that, you, you mentioned, you know, the group that are directly connected to Timberlane. Mm -hmm. You have nearly 4,000 children. Mm -hmm. That means you have at least 4,000 adults connected, but more than likely have somewhere in the eight to 16,000 adults that are connected directly to our schools through a child. Mm -hmm. If every adult that has a direct connection to our school district through a child votes in our communities, it's not even close, if they support that. Sure. But what do we have for vote? I can tell you in Atkinson, there's something like 5,000 5, voters or something. Right. Yeah. Historically, we usually get 1,500 to 2,000 people that come out and vote. Big, big, big numbers came out this last vote. Yeah. Yes. Well, think about what drives the voters out. Big deals. Like, what was it? Remember with the draw, with the withdrawal came out, right? I mean, people came alive during the withdrawal, right? The opposing side, the four side, but and those those polls were were heavy. That's the that, that's the last time I've seen big numbers at our polls. And a significant a drop off for the next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember. There was a lot of work getting people out for that. I we spent many hours time. at the dump. Handing out yeah, the, 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 the dump, right? That's another place everybody goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not in Atkinson, though. We have transfer trucks. station. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you do too. Yeah. So here we are. We're committed to capital improvements, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So a million, a million of that proposed budget is that. Was equipment? We either contractual. No. no. No, it's replacement. So long we stick to stick to our commitment and try to educate our voters and our public 
before the public hearing, but we certainly will do it at the public hearing, about why we're proposing an $83 million budget that it's reflecting. I, I can hear Michelle O'Neill now. Michelle O'Neill was a long time, I have great respect for her, chairman of the budget committee here. She obviously would start her presentation by saying there are fixed costs that you as a public need to realize. Utilities, contract, and she would go through all of those, just like Maria has laid out for us. That the places we could dabble <laughs> were in things that would mean a big hit to the school. Taking money away from those much needed capital improvements that we've fought for. So, Sue, I'm just looking on that same topic. The total adjustments in that area, where we talked about what's contractual, what's not. So, it's six point, I'm going to call it seven million, right? Six point yeah. nine million? Yeah. And I just added up the three lines of non contractual, which are roughly 1.3. That's it. Mm -hmm. You got a million dollars. Right now, I don't think anybody's really going to dispute that. A million's too much. A million's actually not enough. Not, enough. not, not even close not to enough. enough. And so I'm at 1.3. What do we need to start nickel and diming that to pieces? I mean, that, that would almost be embarrassing. Right. Mm -hmm. And we could do that. We could say, okay, take out all the capital improvement. That's a million. Take out all the replacement new equipment. That's 300,000. And there we are. Yeah. 1.3. Big deal. Now all we've done is... It's hurt the district. It's yep. hurt... Hurt the facilities. Cost us more in the end. You're going to have it to pay for oh, some yeah. of those so, things. Look at, so this yeah. is my anything point. Anything that needs to be fixed is going to continue to be deteriorating. Yeah, to be fixed. To be fixed, mm -hmm. and it will continue to. This deteriorate. is why I, I don't want the conversation to sound like right. uh, oh, yeah. this board is scolding we are not any scolding. No. of the employees. No. Yeah. Totally. No. no. But we needed to have. We understand that. Absolutely. We hear presentations, presentations, presentations over the weeks, right? But we never get a chance to have a discussion like this. This is really important for our voters to, I hope, appreciate the fact that we're deliberating this. This is not an easy decision to support this number when you add up all the accounts. But we're supporting our facilities people. We're supporting our music directors. We're supporting our principals. We're supporting our staff. I mean, there's stuff in all the other budgets that we've seen that you can go tweak. You know, if somebody was up a little bit, down a little. That's really just n noise in the background. That's correct. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand dollars here and right. there. Right. So, yeah. do you want to spend yeah. nights and nights and nights going after? Do we yeah, get a, a marker board versus a dry erase? It won't board. even impact the budget. We're not interested in doing that, are we? To no, go? we're not interested. When's the last time our district, and maybe I should know this, has seen even a almost 7% increase? It's been a long time. It's been a long time, right? So just the default budget alone, the increase of the default budget alone, is going sure. to stir up some, because I mean, we're, it's still going to stir up some curiosity, and hopefully that alone, and then if they can hear basically what we just said, the difference between the two, right? You know, and then th th that's when they become educated because, I mean, as a taxpayer, not if I didn't know anything about this, I'd still look at almost a 7% increase and go, wow, that's, that's still really big. That's my other option. And it's important to understand that if you wind up getting the default budget, people sometimes misunderstand and think, oh, we're just going to have what we had this year. No. Oh, no. no You're no, going to have no, far no, less no. because all of those other costs that are increasing will increase we have to account for those, which means you are absolutely cutting the proposed, not, not only the proposed budget, but you're now cutting that existing budget significantly to make up for those costs that you have to make, that you have to, you know, pay for. So the other part I just want to mention too is we got to be careful because we're not trying to build our budget based on the default. No. Not no. at all. So I'm going to go back to, you know, we're, We've got that, um, we're starting at that 83. I add up the stuff that's in the discretionary non-contractual, which is 1.3, which I don't think anybody's going to tell you we don't need. But that's the most I can, like, even think of erasing is 1.3 out of 83, which is still very high compared to last year. Then after that, we can go to every administrator's presentation 
and tweak their I'm up two hundred dollars or I'm up a thousand dollars again that's kinda noise so even though I'm saying we shouldn't be looking at the default we can only adjust what we can adjust by 1.3 off of this list that you've generated mm -hmm. plus the little deltas from each administrator which if you add up all of them they're not very big deltas. Right. So One funny thing is, very level. with the equipment, some of your savings was in repair and maintenance because they were getting the new piece of equipment. Right. Right. So, I mean, okay, I'll forego the equipment, but then guess what? I need to increase my repair and maintenance because I got to keep that functioning for the students. This is a tough year. Oh, it's, yeah. it's <clears throat> hard so looking at the numbers. Yeah, and for so many reasons, as Christy says, you know, the, the revenue, electricity, heat, yeah. that's going to kill us. Yeah, we got a little bit state, of help with retirement and oh, some Benny's help, but it gets e it's getting eaten up with electricity and gas and yep. oil costs. <clears throat> so, Mac, anything you want to add, darling? Yeah, I'm wondering if, if what we do with this uh, media campaign is emphasize the difference in potential spends between the default and the proposed, mm -hmm. which really is that small nugget that you've been talking about. And so if we look at that, you know, one point something million dollar differential, this is what it represents if you vote it down and we do, do go to default. Uh, these, I'm afraid people will see these two numbers which are higher than any of us would like and will say, well, darn, you know, this one's still pretty big. Let's go for that or let's go for default, not realizing what that will actually cost us in real terms. Yes. I, so I think that's where we spend we spend our time, and, and some of I think Kelly's wonderful color graphs uh, could go a long way with that. Yeah, I think that's where we have the conversations that school districts typically have when you wind up with default. Well, before we wind up with default, we have to yeah. talk about what is it that would be cut. Yeah, it's not just capital improvements. It's, it's not just oh, new, new into programs, so staff. We would need to have um, your office yep. and Maria's office and everybody's office put together some of the things that we won't be able to have in a, in a default situation. Yep. It's yep. got to be more than just we can't we right. can't mow the lawn. Right. Uh, I think no. it's also important to figure out what the difference would be uh, from town to town on their portion of the taxes. Say, you know, mm -hmm. it, it might be a 30 cent per thousand difference or, or something like that. I am not a <coughs> math in my head person. But um, I think it's important that to know when people are voting or making their decisions that, yeah, I'm going to vote for the default or I'm going to vote for the proposed, it's only going to cost me a couple bucks more per thousand, and it's worth it, you know, um, whatever that number may be. I mean, on page one, they have the... Yes, I see what the, I, I see the projection yeah. here for... And that's kind of misleading to voters, too. They don't well, I think that. Sandown is having evaluation year as well, so we'll be having some assessments. This rate may look different because our property values are all up from the last time we had assessments. Um, it doesn't change the amount of... Yeah. It's really just a, it's a shell game. Yes. Um, we just but had it in Atkinson. When you, look, when you look at that um, 33 dollars and 81 cents per thousand number it is shocking um, what is our what's our direction here um, I think we need to kind of maybe get one person from each town working with the SAU to Get start to create the push out now until deliberative session. Deliberative, or, uh, the public hearing, public hearing. And, and then, then just keep going and just keep moving from that point because if we don't, so this right, it's it's going to be free. It, it's not going to be pleasant at the public hearing when two or three people are there, and then the push to deliberative. Okay. I think. Yep. The print media and the social media presence is going to become highly agitated. 
let's we have if we look at the schedule um go ahead um, I'm sorry. I just had one comment or kind of question um, at what point do if we really are looking to cut down this budget do we start doing analysis on okay if we start um, are we gonna have to start charging the school kids for transportation or sports transportation for sports equipment for sports um, have the sports teams pay for the field maintenance at what time do we start putting it back onto the community to do take care of some of these things which are huge costs which there's a lot of field stuff in the facilities which my kids have all played sports I'm all for it but I'm just looking at this and I'm going gosh there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on here fixing those fields, which is great. I want to do it. But if anybody starts looking at this like I did and listened, it sounds like we want, you know, natural ingredients on the fields. Yes, of course I want organic natural mm -hmm. stuff on those fields. I, I want them maintained. I want the layers of soil on there so when kids hit their head, they don't end up getting, you know, massive concussions. But, you know, what point do we have to start throwing it back to the community the, the boosters, forming community groups, that they've got to start pitching in more money because this district, we can't afford it. And then you have to start looking at what programs are we going to start cutting at the school level? Well, it won't be what? our decision. It would be... I'm just, no, I'm just saying, these. this is where my mind goes when you start thinking mm -hmm. real sure. cuts, where a district that's going to be in a situation that, that isn't good and the you know what maybe in our campaign as we're going out you know you're looking at we're we're district we the people you know are funding this they can only afford so much and we're not um, you know in Exeter we're not a Bedford I'm sorry and we don't have the community support behind us and until we do we're going to, you know, start looking at the stuff. Maybe if things are, that's on the table, that things might be cut. Maybe people start paying attention. Maybe it will change some people's minds. And if the school values go down, the ratings go down, everybody's property that's values right. are going to suffer. Everybody, whether you have a kid in the district or not. So, you know, as we're getting word out, we need to start thinking about these things because, you know, Yes, we want to offer all these things, but we're not in that position. We're not going to be. Unless we have the community support. Unless we have community support and everybody works together to do this. So I just want to go off of Julie's thought there. So to start breaking things apart, and I'm not saying do it or don't, but the way it is now everybody pays for everything you know my tax rate goes to pay for the kids in you know theater mm -hmm. or a biology or, and so it makes it more of a community right. as soon as you say my kid doesn't play an instrument why do i want to build a pack mm -hmm. yeah then it's it's breaking up that community sure. and then if we do start a la carte right um, you pay for each item we're also going to be taxing this staff with doing billing, you know, and oh, did Mr. and Mrs. Smith pay? And you know, you're delinquent or, or whatever it is. It's just the yeah. bookkeeping around thousands of families. Um, we're having problems getting meals paid for. Right. Can you and imagine so what it would be I for agree with I know. what you're saying? And we'll just toggle <laughs> in and say if you institute a pay to play in a community like this, you are going to disenfranchise so many families and children. Mm -hmm. It's going to create an inequitable situation at school. You are, the education will suffer. Mm -hmm. um, arts, we know, music in increases kids' ability uh, to learn. Mm -hmm. They're better at math, they're better at science, they're better at reading. They, because they can't afford it, they are excluded, makes, uh, is probably one of the worst uh, moves I think that we could uh, right. make. Which is why um, you've got to get the community on board. Equity is important uh, in all facets so of So what's the other option? That we begin just to cut sports. We begin to overpopulate our classrooms to have less teachers. I mean, 
it's just, just it's a domino effect that, it is, is. that will just be out of control so quickly um yeah it's it's a uh, terrifying right and but remember, the, but you have to remember this is a school district the number one priority is the kids education correct mm -hmm. yes. everything else is secondary okay so but do you not do I don't you, agree with it okay I don't agree <laughs> it's with the mentality it, but I'm yeah. saying That's, this yeah. is the you know you start going down that road these are the thoughts that I that are starting to come up, and I would hate to see anything like that. Student but learning and student growth. I would, I would hate it, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. if the if the community is not on board with supporting stuff like this, what choices are we going to have in a few years? Mm -hmm. These buildings are going to be falling apart. We're going to be making emergency repairs, mm -hmm. and what choice do you have? We have to make it make sense to people. It needs to make fiscal sense, it needs to make educational sense, it needs to make community sense. Yep. It needs to be something that everybody recognizes as being of value, that it's a shared value among all of our community members, which I strongly believe it is. You know, I, I know that's how our community thinks. It's an I know that's what we want for our kids and, and our community members are invested in it. We just need to help them understand what a priority it needs to be for us absolutely right now. And, you know, in this day and age, it's a time where we all become very isolated from one another, even as connected as we are digitally, and that's why that digital platform is so important for getting the messages out and bringing people in and, and getting people connected. Um, but it also makes it very easy for us to, you know, I'm too busy, I have too much going on, all of that. That's, that's the society that we live in. We isolate ourselves and we, we watch things on screens and phones and see, you know, what's happening. But this is where a community has to come together in an old-fashioned way and be connected with one another, share the values, and, you know, take on the responsibilities that come with those values and say, this is what we want for our community. What about putting together? I remember, you know, during football season where uh, Mr. Mensis and... Uh, you know about the football and I, I forget the exact well they got on an email got sent out right and there was a video and a yeah, lot that, of people watched that video yeah, you were it, on there yeah what yeah. was that right it doesn't even matter what it was regarding but it was it was it was, it was somewhat you know it was, it was somewhat person to person because you're looking at the mm -hmm. screen and you're hearing it and it's putting a meaning behind it right because you're hearing voices talk I mean we could do something like that yeah. and send it out in an email and if people are hearing it instead of reading it, they may process it a little bit better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can you make some TikToks? Yeah. yeah. TikToks are yeah. a great yeah. idea. Yeah. TikToks. Does anybody have a French bulldog? Because <laughs> I think you need one for a TikTok. Kate, Kate does. Right? Do not. Got it. She does. does. Yeah. Get our student rep involved. What's the Get fine the line, Absolutely. Liz, between doing that and becoming electionary. Um, can't tell people how to vote. We can't, exactly. We can't tell them how to vote, but we can give them the information to make the choice that they want to make. Um, this past election season, a lot of mailers went out. I'm sure you all got them all. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, they weren't telling you how to vote, but they tell you, they present their point of view. Um, and that's what we need to do is present our point of view of um, the budget, of default versus. What are you going to get for your $83 million? Right. <coughs> this is exactly, you know, it's, it's kind of got to be a sales pitch of why this is a good thing for the district. And I think the a video that Christy mentioned and um, making the old fashioned stump chit chats at PTA meetings mm -hmm. and um, getting a little grassroots going um, with parents who believe in this and pushing it through. Um, I was part of the uh, with part of one side of the withdrawal and there was quite a grassroots that right. switched it um, we have to stay is it I was yes. I was I part that. of that yeah 
grassroots to keep it with the yeah. drama mamas. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's about being informational as much as possible. You, That's how we prevent being electioneering. Yes. Is being it informational. It all has to be information and not you need to vote this. It right. has to be informational. Right. Mark? What about a PowerPoint, six or seven slides that we can put on social media? That will generate more information and more discussion than I think just about any mail that we can send out, which will end up being recycled. We need to do all of the are above. You, are you yes. willing to work on that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> I will do it. Maria and I will do it. You're funny. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> you like how I volunteer? You're retired me? now. You're welcome. <laughs> So you can do that. Um, Happy to help. Yeah, with the, with the, you know, this is what's gonna, what your eighty-three million, a yes vote, will yeah. will give us. What a yes will do, what a no will do. Mm -hmm. The choice is in your hands, basically. And it's got to show some of those other kinds of things that you're referring to, Chris. It's, Absolutely. You know, it's I, musical instruments. There's some other one-time budget things that. That we'll get, you know, replacement of some kids. Put, them, put their input on there. I like the slide idea. Let's start with yeah. that. Get a, get, because the last time you you had the middle school send it out, the high school send it out, and if you're on any of those social media pages, I got the same presentation right for. I got it from every single school system. A, a building, mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. So, and I think if we can get it going now start to hit the PTA better. meetings come January and even maybe have is the elementary school doing their concerts in January? Uh, they're, they're doing, doing it now. now. December and January really? as well. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, because whatever there is at the PAC sporting events have a small table with here you go, have a conversation. It's going to be a lot of work for three months but Are we ready tonight? to vote to approve do you want we have one more meeting scheduled december 22nd i'm really worried about getting a quorum um for that um will we have everybody here i would love it if we were all here to vote okay. really 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 would i don't want to rush the vote one way or the other tonight but time's getting short now that we've got to approve or if we vote not to approve this, some work has to be done someplace. What, what's your thinking, anybody? I wasn't thinking that far ahead just yet, because <laughs> I was still talking on this other stuff. Anybody else? Thoughts? I personally don't feel like I'm quite ready to vote yet. I'd like to have a little bit more time with this. If we can have a quorum at the December 22nd meeting, I would prefer to vote then, if possible. We could potentially give a direction we'd like to see it go but to actually have a formal vote you need to what say you know thumbs up or thumbs down well we vote to approve the budget to move forward towards the public with hearing the, the public, so yeah. if you're ready to uh, vote this number tonight which no. i'm hearing maybe you're not trying we've only got one more meeting left before there's a time period that has to be posted mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. that public hearing so, it, what were to happen if we did not vote this evening and we did not have a quorum for the next meeting? I don't know. I think we would have to have a meeting. We'd have to have a special I think we'd meeting. have to have a special meeting prior to January 1st yes. or whenever that posting was. Yes. So, yeah, we've Mar done that before. Maria, Maria, are you there? Is Maria back? I do because I've been what's the, sitting in the no, I'm here. What's I'm the here. what's the date for the posting for the for the uh, public hearing? What? Oh, the public hearing is January twelfth, I believe. I know, but when do you have to have your stuff posted? Is it two weeks? January sixth. By January sixth. Yeah. Right. Is January sixth. Sixth. Yes. Six. Yes. Six. Is there anybody here who feels confident they can't be at the, it's not an ideal date, but December 22nd meeting? I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll be, I can I'll be commit here. to being here. So at I'm least have us here. here. <laughs> Where else are you going to be? Right. I'm not here and I'm at my PTA meeting talking about it. 
but let's make a direction for um, Maria. Maria and the administration. Give us some facts about what what would be inappropriate. What would be gone, cut. right? What's what? What's our direction here? So I think what I would start by saying is give us all the the low-hanging fruit that we can grab. So, again, I don't want to see, let's get rid of some crayons in a classroom at the middle school. I don't say that. If there's any, so typically we, we see um, in all the presentations, these are my top five biggest expenses. If if we could see the top, the top expenses that we can at least talk about. Yeah, it, it's, That's it, all it is. It's staff, it's programs, it's services to kids. It's, you know, in transportation, I don't even know what the breakout would be, but the only thing in transportation, you could eliminate high school transportation. But that's what you're, no, looking, we, that's what we, you're looking for. Those but we can't do that kind of stuff here. No, we can't. Understood. Right. I'm just saying, but that's what we'd have yeah. to. Right. Right. But yeah, it's going to come down. We have to go looking at staff at programs nope, and, and services. We can't do staff. We can't well, discuss well, staff here. You're talking about class, class size. You, you ha there's, you're not going to find any money. It, you know, looking at crayons, like you said, mm -hmm. you're only going to find, I mean, what are we looking for? A million, two million dollars? Yeah. You're only going to find that in staff or capital improvements. That's it. Yeah. Okay, wipe out all the capital improvement yeah. for a million dollars and then start picking off those low, you know, six tables for Mac but, and Academy. Yes, this from but Paula, that from Danville. A projector. A yeah, projector, the not, microphones, right. you know, the... Uh, I mean, there's that stuff. We could, you know, we could, we could the, bundle a bunch of things together and say, "Oh, here's yeah. seventy thousand dollars." But we can't. Stuff. Do we want? We, we can ask them for that, but I think we got to be clear. We can't ask them to even bring up topics about staff, not our purview, right? Nothing contractual. Well, we can, uh, oh no, we can. you're eliminating positions to get that kind of money to get uh, two million dollars. So you're eliminating positions. That's the only place you're going. Happened. That's the only happen. place you're going. There'd be no other recommendation he could make. This, it's not anyway. It's I mean, before I okay, that's would, what you're saying. before I would recommend eliminating <clears throat> positions, I'd kick the capital improvement thing, and that's just as bad in some ways. Mm -hmm. But if you know, if if you put me on the spot and say, are you going to create a or continue a problem that we currently have? Yes. Or create a new problem for kids. So if I I'm said going to continue yeah, a problem, but then just cutting have. staff is inevitable anyway. You're just delaying it. If you're cutting out exactly the, it, the next I mean, year, because you're we're going to have the, the it, now you the whatever and and the increase will be up, exponential. And the increase will be exponential the next year. Well, mm -hmm. It's just, that's, that's, why, what happens. that's why this is as big right. as it is. I believe. So I it didn't do anything last year. Just little bits, little bits, little bits. And for years, probably about a decade. Every school district in southern New Hampshire did about the same thing. We all made uh, proposed budgets that were, bring it $100,000 below default, mm -hmm. and that way it'll pass. Yep. Then next year, bring it 200000 below default. All right, just bring it 100 again. Now you're, you know, after 10 years, you're a million dollars below what was once a default budget. <coughs> and then we start to lose adequacy, and now you have this happening, you know? The state revenue and other revenues are going down, and costs are going up. And so you're moving further and further away, creating a great, greater delta every time that's not even within your control. Here we are. So Some of us saw this coming. I did. Once you get on that CIP committee, you know, I've been on it since yeah. the beginning of it. I, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it, this was, uh-oh. Yeah. Julie was on it originally. ago that that... That we, we knew that, that, right? And that's, Karen, what you were talking about beforehand, right? You know, before the meeting even started, there was mm -hmm. the conversation about, whoa, you know, as a resident volunteering to be part of this, you, you start to learn a little bit and realize, I mean, this is a, you know, it's something of great magnitude. It truly right? is. We are the largest organization in all four towns. Or probably the largest organization, if you combine the largest organizations from all four towns. Timberland is the employer. largest employer in this region. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We yeah. have for years. All right. Um, I have one more thing. I just like to make sure everybody sees, and I don't know if you can bring it up, but so on the very, very last page, because I always find this part fascinating every year. So if I look at the very bottom for the year 2024, 
um, total revenue, so we're at 83,020, right? 83.7 mm -hmm. million. Look at the shift on the district assessment. So the district assessment is what the towns have to raise through property taxes. So if I go from those years back, it was 54 million, 53 million, 59 million, and now we're at 68. That shows you that 9%. That $68 million is what Atkinson, Sandown, Danville, Plaza are going to have to push out to the taxpayers and say, I'm not collecting $59 million this year. I'm collecting almost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. $69 million. $69 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, $69 million. Mm -hmm. And that's a direct impact going right to the property owners. And that's $9 million more than this I mean, it's one thing if that goes up if we get it from other income revenues. Right. But our income has gone down, and so our assessment has to go up. Yep. Right. Again, right. not to income blame anybody here. It it's just I want blame. the people to please, understand. Yes. Please note the educational grants as well and the trend there. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So we've, we took, we've gotten less in educational grants. Um, sure. It varies year by year, but that's a kind of a big hit there. Like it's a two point three million dollar delta between twenty four and twenty three. Yes. Yeah. She wanna look for some uh, big changes in the budget. I'll take a go. And that might be a question we ask the commissioner next week. Is that that different? He's commit speaking of which he's committed to coming, right? Yes. Yes. Met with him yesterday. Okay, um, but back to the budget. So, what's our? What are we doing tonight? We're. It sounds like we, we want to hold off. We want to wait. We want to encourage some information. Maybe a little slide presentation put together that we can shove out mm -hmm. on social media or all this, every place we can put on, put it out. Make a real commitment to coming on the twenty second because mm -hmm. that's the last time. Mm -hmm. uh, as a budget committee, the, the the joint meeting with at the school board meeting is not a budget committee meeting. So, um, it'll be a work session. What I think would be good to put it into lay terms, if you're going to do some kind of media presentation anywhere, I don't care where you go, the supermarket Absolutely. is. So I go back to this first page, and it talks about what the um, the delta tax rate increase would be for each town. Yeah. So if they, and I just did this with Lisa, is I just said, look, I'll pick on Sandown. You know, they're at $5.44 increase. If I took a $400,000 home mm -hmm. at $5, that's two grand increase on a $400,000 house. That's a big pill to So if we want to educate the people and you want them to understand What's going to change on my bill when I come in, right? Because we don't want to sugarcoat or anything. You know, we want to tell them we need this, and this is what it's going to cost you. So they understand when they check the box, um, they understand what their taxes will change based on their house. So I think some type of example that said per mm -hmm. town, as an example, if your house had this value, this is what you see it change by. It's got you got to be fair. We can't, right? If you want to inform them, we got to inform them. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But Mike, also on that, going on that note, you might want to show them this is what it's gonna, what how the impact will be even with the default budget. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. the same. They Correct. need to yes. weigh it. It's really Agreed. about the same. Yeah. Uh, it's because of the numbers being you know what I'm saying? It's right. not a big delta there. I agree that you should show them right. both, but to Sue's point. 2000 versus 1900. Yeah. So, I and I, I would know, argue people, that, for, but I'm saying if you yes. have that in black and white, yes. people people might not understand that. They'll just think that so they don't understand lower. that. I I'm like going to tell about you that stuff because people. I don't like when you start talking about this is the impact on your on the. It's not the not. It's the tax rate change, not your bill change. Correct. Mm -hmm. it's so. If I'm thinking, okay, for $2,000, I'm going to get my kid educated all year with every sport, 
every music program, transportation. That sounds pretty good. You're saying what? By just saying the change? Yeah. I, you just told me that in Sandown, for $2,000, I can educate no, my no, kid no, for no, a year. No. I'm, I'm telling you, that's how people will think. That's why I'm leaving it to these professionals <laughs> <laughs> to word it so the, 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 the recipient understands mm. what a 5.44%. Mark? <laughs> May I suggest that we also formally invite the selectmen from all the towns yes. to attend the next meeting mm -hmm. for any questions they should have? We go to the selectmen. I think, on the other hand, we used to go to the Board of Selectmen and make a presentation yeah. to each town. Go to their, go to their campus. Yep. But, that's, I mean, we can invite them. Do we, do we have time for that? I don't know. I don't know. We're down to the last wire for, as far as I'm concerned. We've got two weeks. Two weeks to reconvene with all of this. No. Yeah, the, so the, the clock is running out. The very least we can do is send the invite, I think. Yeah. Why you Yeah. I mean, I certainly will speak to the selectmen that I know, but... You might want to raise your two cents with inflation. I'm from saying now it will be four cents now. <laughs> no, it'll be $2,000. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important to just make sure that people understand that the default budget will result in staffing losses. Yeah, I'd rather go that route. Um, this is what you're going to lose. Very important for people to understand that teachers will have to be cut, and services will have to, to be cut, yeah. right, and Mark? our buildings will continue Mark. to deteriorate. Right. Come back, Mark. Yes, and I'm here. Yes, that's my boy. And, and the school board's well aware of um, what we what we what we might lose and, and what we yeah. might gain from a budget. Right? Painfully aware. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else to come before us tonight? I think so, we've, we've kind so of talked about Are we around. still asking for the direction from administration yeah, to I'd try like and to, throw some. Just, just so we hear some of that. Just yeah. don't. Yeah, I mean, Big numbers. Part of the, yeah. What would it look like? You know, if, yeah. if what would we have to. Mm -hmm. I, I'll come up with a menu mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. you know, the items that have any well, you probably can significant cost. Items. I've done this before, and then we can sit there, we can look at it, and you, well, what if we did this and this? What if we took this and this? Ten staff, it's 15 pairs, it's... Right. Yeah. And I just want to say that going through all the presentations, because I have them all, those deltas for sitting through them, they're not worth discussing. No. At each, right, each building presentation no. or each department? I mean, if they hit went crazy high, I'd discuss them, but they're not... Worth and, and I appreciate it because a lot of them, and Maria has been trying to do that, get things into the right categories. Yeah. So some of that, we were hearing that. This got moved over here, so this is a 1,000 less because it's over here now. So we heard some of that, which was very informative, but you're right. It was The one thing that came forward prior to the presentation here that I did away with that because I knew we would be exactly here, right? We knew we were going to be somewhere in this ballpark was the proposal that um, John Vaccareza made to, lunch. you know, fund a lunch for everybody. Three million dollars. I said, there's just no yep. way. We can't do I it. love that idea. But Three million dollars. Tack right. that on. Okay, right. so now we're looking at a, yeah, yeah. yeah. so instead of, yeah, another three million, so 80, uh, $86 million budget. Right. I think philosophically, everybody can get behind an idea like that. Of course. This, we can't afford that kind of philosophy right there. Yeah. And, and also, if... I don't know if you're aware, but as far as the state grants go, if we were ever to be starting to look into seeking funding for any kind of improve, you know, significant improvements on the schools, one of the things that they do look at are the um, the school lunch program. How many people are in need? Right. Yeah, your so free and reduced runs if you, everything. If we were um, ever to be going down that route, we again would have to do a huge campaign to get anybody in this district that may not be a part of that program that would qualify to sign on to it because that's how the people the schools that's one move of up. The, yeah, that's it's one just of one of it's yeah. you know adequacy too. You know I it, believe it, even if you don't qualify, is that correct? That it, you you should still sign up. Why? Oh. You apply. You apply. You apply. Yeah. Because I think those numbers are taken into consideration as well. Oh. 
I'm lost. Tell correct? me again why everybody should just apply. Maria, you want, or Lisa, or Carrie, actually. Yeah. Um, That's the book. Yeah, we, so yeah. it does help with job. statistics for trends, and it helps. They look at our total number, and then they look at the qualified number. Total the total number of apl applications? Five. Yes. Total applied. Yes. And, and total then, then qualified. And they that use that is for consideration of some things. Who actually qualifies. Right. But the data is also really good to have. Right. But the levels that... It, what Carrie has brought to the, our attention is the level to qualify for free and deuce is so low. It, it's 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 hard to get there. And the people that and need help, or the majority of them that we've found, are the people that missed it by two grand, three grand a year. Right. So if you're hurting mm -hmm. and you're off by two thousand, yeah. you remain hurting. Mm -hmm. Yep. It helps us and identify them, them though. Right. To Prices get go them up help that they more. need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, now people are struggling worse than ever. All right, so we do want our public to know that this budget does not reflect um, the principal from the high school. The $3 million free lunch. Suggestion. I don't want that nope. out there. It, uh, this budget does not reflect that, although we ph philosophically agree with the idea. It is not in the budget. Well, hold on. Let's back up. I think we philosophically agree that Everything in life should be free. <laughs> I'm not sure I have philosophical degrees. It's all lollipops and gumdrops. I want to make sure our public realizes it is not in this right. in this budget. Yeah. <laughs> Before I get an email from somebody saying. Okay, if there's nothing else to come before tonight, then. No, there is not. Then I'm going to lead with everybody to try to be at our December 22nd meeting as that will be our last which is still a Thursday which is a Thursday here at 7 o'clock um, prior to the budget having to be published and finalized etc all right um, and with that Mark are you all set buddy yes ma'am Maria are you all set yes thank you <laughs> feel you. Better. Hope you feel better. You're welcome. We hope you feel well. And again, our condolences to the McCormick, yes. McCormick family. And with that, good night, Timberland. <laughs>